A little over two years ago now, I made this semi-functional marble machine in scrap mechanic. This was always meant to be a very simple novelty though, and recently, I wanted to try something a lot more ambitious, making a fully programmable music machine. To start though, I want to show you guys the tote bot heads, and these are the things that actually produce sound in-game. Now, I got a lot of different options here, but basically you can adjust the volume of it, you can change between two different styles, and you can also select 25 different notes. Now this actually gives quite a bit of variety here, and you can see I put together a little demo here, and basically just by hooking up some input to them, they'll start to play the note. Now one of the things I wanted to test was how far away I could get and still hear it. So you'll see here I hooked up a switch permanently, and just as I bob up and down here, you can hear there's a noticeable difference in volume. Now trying to back away now, it also gets quite a bit quieter the farther away you get, and overall that told me that I needed to make sure I'd surround myself pretty uniformly with all 200 different blocks I was going to need. One of my goals for this project was to make sure I had one of every single note available to me, which means I was going to need all 25 notes in the two styles and all four of the heads. All of these different combinations was going to be a lot to address here, but I figured I could start these green heads now and start to make a wall. So I got a line of these down here, and after that, you can see now I'm just trying to fill out the entire thing. So once I got those on here, you can see now I'm starting to set all of their values. I pretty much just had to go sequentially here and keep going up by a semitone until I eventually hit every single note. And of course, there were a few errors, so I had to go back and fix those. But once that was all done here, I had to go back and do this over again, but this time use the dance style instead of the retro style. This was a little tedious, but eventually I did actually get it done here. And after that, you can see behind all all those heads, I wanted to add on some timers. This was just a test that I could address everything here, and you can see now, I'm chaining each of the timers into the last one. This is basically going to work like a long snake, and by pressing this button here, you can see the signal kind of propagate down this chain. And just by hooking up each of these timers to a different note here, you can see me play that through all of the heads. This didn't really sound great, but at the very least, it was working, so with that basic structure together, I got rid of the timers now, and what I wanted to try doing was mounting this upright. Now you can see here I got this in place and after that I started building up another wall and this is going to be for the drum heads. Now pretty much I just had to do this three more times for all the other variants and you can see me getting all these in place now. This was probably one of the more tedious parts of the build but fortunately it was over a lot quicker than I thought and I just finished up here with all of the red heads. With those in place though now I had to address every single one of these but after a little while here I got everything in place, and now I was ready to start adding on some logic gates. Now, I hadn't fully decided exactly how I wanted to address these, but the most obvious thing to start with here was to add on a lot of logic gates to the back, and you can see now I'm hooking them up to all of the heads in order. This is going to make connecting them to a system a lot easier later, since they're going to be much better organized. Now, once again, this took a little while, but eventually I got everything in order here, and you can see now. I'm able to play a couple of notes here, and it sounds pretty good. Switching between a major and minor chord here also seemed to work, so that just told me that everything actually was in the correct order here, and I should be able to use this for all the other walls. So that's exactly what I started to do here, and you can see, I just went through this long process connecting these up once again. And finally now, you can see me finishing up that last side, and with all that complete, now I wanted to start working on some logic. To start out with though, I just needed a simple way to be able to read data, and to do that, I was thinking of using a sensor. Now, by setting its color to red here, as I paint a block red right in front of it, you can see it turns on, and unpainting that block will turn it off. This gives me a very easy way to be able to write data, and you can see I can even set another sensor on the other side to a different color, and use a single block to represent more than one bit. Now, ultimately though, I added in a piston here, and the plan is going to be able to push these blocks out of the way and load new ones in to continuously be able to read different bytes. I did have another idea of how to make this sensor design work though, so I decided to clear everything off here and start working on how I'm going to structure the data. These concrete blocks I'm putting down now are going to represent some of the data that I'm storing, and you can see here, if I put down four of them now, I can set the first color to be different, and that can represent which type of block I want to play. In addition, I can use the next block and either paint it black or white, and that's going to represent 
whether I want to play the retro notes or the dance notes. This seemed like an easy way to go, and I realized here, instead of coloring the first block four different colors, I can instead just use two bits here, and this gets the same information across, while also making it a lot easier to add in sensors. Now, as we said, the red one's going to be the type of note, the blue one's going to be dance or retro, and these purple ones are going to be the actual note we're playing. This was pretty much all the information I thought I needed at the moment, so with that, you can see now I'm adding in some sensors to look at those blocks that I painted. Now, you'll also notice I'm adding in a lot of logic gates, and this is to do some basic decoding. The idea here is I already have my notes set up, so I can address one of the four different types of notes or dancer retro. Now, I'm starting out with just four logic gates, but you can see now by painting the first two bits, I'm able to select which type of head I want to play. And by adding in four more logic gates now, I'm also able to select whether I want to play dancer retro, and this gives me all of the basic addressing I need. Next up, though, I have six bits that I'm using to tell which note I actually want to play. Now, to turn this six-bit number into an individual note, I had to do pretty much exactly the same thing I did before, but on a much larger scale. So this took quite a while to get everything wired up here, but once I had everything in place now, it's kind of a mess, but it also was working. By painting these blocks here, I'm able to select which note I want to play, and with both of these pieces of information together, this was looking good, and I wanted to re-weld it onto the machine in a more convenient spot. Before I connected this up to everything else, though, I wanted to give it a quick test and run through every single note to make sure it's playing correctly. Now, to do that, I needed to make a count and you can see here, I can use three XOR gates connected in a loop like this, and by sending a single tick pulse through all of them, I'm able to quickly turn them off or on every time I hit the button. Now, the real advantage to this is that I can keep connecting these into each other, and by doing that, it lets me create a very simple counter here, and also by using an automatic loop here, I'm able to keep counting through values. So, with that made here, I just connected this up to each of the inputs now, and with everything in place, I wanted to give it a quick test. Now, now you can see it sometimes would mostly go down in the right way, but it also seemed to kind of break for some other values. Now part of the problem was that I had some timing issues here, so by using some timers to intentionally delay some values, this was performing a lot better. Now I was able to slowly step through all the values here, and this was actually working correctly. Of course, listening to this inside actually did seem to be working too, so my basic addressing idea actually did seem to be coming together. So now Next, I want to hook up all of the green notes here, and you can see now I am able to somewhat address them, and by adding in the individual note controls as well, I was able to step through every single head. This design, though, does have one major problem. Because of the way that I've compressed the data, I'm actually only able to play a single note at once. This obviously isn't exactly ideal, but there was a trick I wanted to employ here to actually be able to play more than one at once. Now, you can see I'm adding in a lot of logic gates here, and also quite a few switches, and these are going to represent different notes that I want to play. I can quickly switch between these notes and be able to play two separate things at the exact same time. Now, this idea of quickly switching between two different outputs is actually completely valid in real life, but it has some problems here. The thing is, one tick in this game is 25 milliseconds, which is actually way too long to get away with this. If you listen inside, it's actually quite obvious I'm switching between these notes, which really isn't great. If I want to add on more notes, it's only going to get worse as well, so I had a plan of how I wanted to fix this issue, but before I did that, I wanted to start working on the actual data storage. To do this, I built up a wall here, and you can see once again, I put down my sensors, and once I did that, I'm also adding in some cannons. This might seem a little weird, but what I wanted to try doing was using a destructible material to write my data on, and every single time I want to read a new bit, I'll be able to chop off one block on the bottom, have it fall down, and expose a new layer to the sensors. The material I chose for this is actually bubble wrap here, and once I had this in place, I started to write down some sample data, but trying this out, it 
kind of worked, except for the fact that it got shot out of the machine. This wasn't exactly ideal, so instead, I tried using glass, which is also destructible, but it's quite a bit heavier. And trying this out, while it was a little bit better, it still was jumping all over the place, and this just really wasn't gonna work. After even more tries, the glass still was just jumping right into the air, so I knew I was gonna need something quite a bit different to make this work. Now, my new plan was to store the data horizontally, and do this, so you can see I'm adding in some pistons, to move it forward for me. This is gonna have a small problem, which I'll show in a second here, but once I got those blocks up in place now, I'm able to connect these up to some switches, and you can see I'm able to push these forward, so I'm able to pull forward the data, and get it into place. Now, I started building up some glass around here to work as my track, and with all of this in place now, I built up some sample data here, and also a track for it to ride on. Now, you can see here, I'm able to reach into the track and pull pull it forward. As I pulled back though, I could see the data also pulled back a little bit, and this meant that I wasn't able to slot it back into the machine to push it forward again. Fortunately though, this was a reasonably easy solution, and to fix this, I added a couple more pistons here, and these are gonna expand when I'm trying to pull back my mechanism. Now this seemed to totally do the trick now, and you can see here, I'm able to continuously pull this forward one step every single time. This is the kind of consistency I'm definitely going going to need in order to make this all work here, and with this method devised, I also came up with this new data structure. Now, it's pretty similar to before, because I have two bits in the front to select which head I want to play, one to select whether it's dance or retro, five here to select the note that I actually want to play, I have three that I reserved just in case I wanted to use them later, and finally at the end here, I have five for the duration of the note. That's something I haven't talked about yet, and I'll get into that a little bit later, but you can see here, I'm building up my large slab of data, and I extended this across the entire track. And this I figured to be enough for a pretty simple song here, and with all this built out now, I dropped it down, and you can see now, I started to cut out the track to be able to pull this forward. After that, I also put down the sensors here, and these are of course to actually read the data on the track. And you can see here, I put down some sample data now, and with that, I'm able to cycle through this, and the sensors do appear to actually be reading it. With this ready to go though, one one thing I skipped over before was how I'm going to address multiple notes at once. The simplest idea I could come up with was instead of trying to address every single note out of one of these systems, I'm going to have one for each of the four note types. This means I could play a maximum of one note out of each of the four banks, but I'll at least be able to play four different notes all at once. Now though is where things start to get quite a bit more complicated. You can see I'm starting to build up an SR latch here, and this is going to let me store data. By hitting each of these buttons, I'm able to either store a 1 or a 0, and by adding on a few more logic gates, I can change this to add a toggle switch, and instead store whatever its current value is. Now, what this is going to let me do is effectively read in data, and then remember what was read. You can see in this simple demo here, I'm actually able to read in all 1s, and turn on all of these lights. Of course, eventually I'm going to replace all these switches with the sensors instead, and that'll let me remember what was on that data track. And and one of the other things I skipped over was the note duration, and it's actually super simple. By using another SR latch here, I could set five different timers, and by having all these have a different value, I'm able to turn on the output for a differing amount of time. This should actually let me start addressing some things, and with everything ready to go here, I wanted to start hooking it up to the sensors. Now to begin, I'm starting out with the note selection data, and except for getting those lines in place now, I'm starting to hook up the note data. And just by painting different blocks, here, by pressing this button, I'm able to read in that value, and I'm able to remember it. This is functionally exactly what I need it to do, so with all this ready to go, I wanted to start making all of the other channels. Unfortunately, this is where things get extremely complicated, because I pretty much have to do exactly what I did before, but three more times. So now began the long process of copying as much as I could, and otherwise dragging lines from one place to another. This was definitely quite painful, but once I was finally done here, I wanted to try to give this a simple test. One problem though, is after doing this for a while, painting these blocks is very laggy now. This was a very bad sign, but I was hoping that it was just all the connections that I made, and that it wasn't going to be a super big deal. The lag though, just seemed to keep getting worse the more that I tried to mess with stuff, and trying to play this now, the moment that the data bar tried to move, it was unbelievably slow. It was sort of working actually, I wasn't 
able to read in some data, but it was also causing a lot of glitches here, and this was just unacceptably slow. The blue heads were also frequently freaking out like this and just randomly playing notes, so I knew that this data bar idea probably needed to go. So after a while, I decided to cut this off here, and I had a different idea that should work a lot faster while being a lot less space efficient. So I'm building out some wood now, and you can see in the end of it, I'm putting down a timer, and I'm putting down a lot of switches. Now these are going to be my new way of actually setting data, and by adding in some logic gates here, I can have them turn on only when the timer is on and the switch is on. This is going to effectively let me cycle between different notes to play, and after making one of these sections here, you can see I copied it, and I welded another copy on the back of it. Now this, of course, is going to let me set two notes, and you can see welding on another of these, now I have four notes. Now after linking all these timers together, you can see it propagate through, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I made this a lot longer than it was before, and you can see what I'm doing now is adding on more logic gates on top, and I need to connect every single logic gate in a line to those blocks. This is effectively coalescing all of the data into one place, and once I have all these logic gates, they're effectively going to be replacing the sensors that I had on the previous design. So with this massive bar put together here, I welded it on the machine, and now I just had to make a few small changes to connect everything back up. Fortunately, this design was pretty much just a drop and replacement though, because again, pretty much all these logic gates are directly replacing the sensors I had before. But with everything hooked up, you can see now I'm trying to key in some notes here, and I wanted to start out with a very simple song just to test if it was working. Now, one very strange thing you'll notice is that sometimes it reads in a wrong note right before it plays the correct one. Otherwise though, it was playing the data that I had loaded in here, which is good, and checking out the machine a little bit, I noticed I had just a tiny timing issue that I was able to solve with a single timer block. Basically, I was reading data in just a little too early, and with this, now I'm right on time, and you can see here I'm playing things exactly like I need to. Now I tried this again, but this time I wanted to address the blue wall, but I noticed it was kind of weird, and looking at the logic here, it's frequently just kind of switching randomly, and that really wasn't great. Now, at the very least, the red wall seems to be working fine, so I just needed to solve whatever was going on with the blue wall. I was able to make it quite a bit better here, though, and while it still is a little glitchy, it at least mostly was working. And the yellow wall, I was able to address pretty quickly here, and you can see it works pretty much the same way as all the other ones. And just to wrap up here, I wanted to try playing multiple notes out of different heads just to show the full capabilities of this thing. Now, as you could tell, I was building this very haphazard and I didn't really come in with any clear plan. Now given that, I actually think it turned out reasonably well, but if I ever came back for a version 2, I think I can make this thing significantly better. So if you want to see more scrap mechanic videos, if you have any ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Of course, make sure to like the video if you like the builds. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.